there to my feed. I think it's Saquon. Good evening and welcome to Know Your Purpose. I am Dr. Stacey Venable. And tonight we have our friend Derek Terry on tonight. Uh, he and I have known each other for a very long time. And uh, we just want to bring forth some informative information. But before we do that, we have to drop out some housekeeping, disclosures, and disclaimers. These are our views, our opinions. We are taking ownership for the platform that we stand on tonight. Some of you may agree and some of you may disagree. But understand, you have the right to do that. And we have the right to bring you the information that we feel as though we stand on on our principles and our views. So with further ado, we want to move forward. Again, this is uh, Derek Terry, and he is he has a wonderful book out that says, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the good and the bad in the school systems, in the education systems. So if you don't know, grab your pen, grab your paper. He's going to be dropping a lot of good nuggets. Uh, we're here for it. If you have any comments, please leave them. Uh, go to the Know Your Purpose uh, website, I'm sorry, page, Facebook page. That's the only way we can see your comments if you want to comment while we're in the view of the podcast show. So Derek, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Like I said, we've mm. known each other. We just sat, we sat over in the business suites and uh, let's see, you were in, I was in first grade. Yeah, probably first or I don't know. I, I know I was in fourth grade when I moved to Maryland <laughs> and um, I stayed over in Jacob street and I had a lot of friends that lived over in Beacon Terrace. So I remember this uh, little girl and this little boy <laughs> just running it. around. And then as they got older, one was loud. <laughs> I wonder which one that was. That had to be me. Had to and be. The, the other one was, was real aggressive. Wow, the two twins. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's it just amazing after all these years uh, what we've been able to accomplish. Yes. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to be on the show. Oh yeah, I had to. I yeah. had to when I when I started reading into the book, I was like, okay, because I, I am in still in the education field. Um, I was like, wait a minute, some of these things that he's targeted are things that I've, I've gone through um, as being an educator. Um, and I'm like, wait a minute, he's not complaining, but he's just saying. Yeah. And basically I, we talked about it earlier, I, I guess because of my military background, because of the way that my mom and dad are, if you're going to complain, bring a solution to the table. That's right. I mean, maybe that if you're going so right. to complain and with no solution, I really don't care. To, basically, shut up. I don't really care to hear from you. That's right. No, doesn't mean I'm going to agree with your solution, mm -hmm. but at least have a solution. <laughs> at least have a solution. You know, at least have it. What's your have solution? Something. Have I something. I, I don't know. When you so. go to stand up to take the mic to do some complaining, might it be a mic or a bullhorn or Plymouth Rock? Make sure you have a solution already in play for that. Yeah, and I think uh, when, when I talk about you know how the book came about, the book really was therapeutic. Um, at the time, mm -hmm. I was probably in my 12th year of teaching and i was experiencing a lot of traumatic things in my life and and i'm going to mention charles county i was in charles county mm -hmm. at the time teaching mm -hmm. and I, I just didn't really think they were responsive to my mental mm -hmm. needs meaning that i had a lot of deaths that went on mm -hmm. and i went to, i had to go to my aunt's funeral and i got a phone call Wow, I'm, you know, I'm at the front. I'm like, why are you calling me? I did not tell you I was gonna be off. Yeah, and it it just pissed me off mm -hmm. to the point that I was like, you know what, I, I can't fool with this right now. Right, and literally, I, I would have rather been serving in Iraq than to continue teaching at that time. That that that's that's a big that's so, big that's so, really big. But I actually did go on active duty mm -hmm. for about a year, and then during that time, I wrote the book, and the book was therapeutic and. Because what I've seen is when teachers, um, they I wouldn't say complain, but when they vent their concerns, mm -hmm. they're labeled as a troublemaker. Troublemaker. They blackball. Yes. They they get bullied. Yes. And all this other stuff, and it started to get to me. I'm thinking, okay, we're in the business to help out kids, but nobody mm -hmm. wants to help out us. Right. So and, so in in that realm of it all, where where do you where do where do you guys go for your mental health? Because you it's, it's it's in our contracts that we get so many mental health days. We get to we get to say, you know what, I'm not OK and walk away. I mean, in, it, in, it, in your room, where did where'd you get? I didn't. To be honest with you, there's more work that you have to do when you're off than when you're there. That's true. So you're thinking, OK, if I take off now, I got to do makeup lesson plan. Mm -hmm. I got to be off. 
Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm a special educator. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't like leaving that much because of the connection I had with, with my students. So, uh, so a, a lot of, a lot of people that work with special needs students or even special ed students, uh, they, because they, they draw that attachment, but then again, you're talking about how, you know, your mental health was on the line too, and how you put those children before that. Yeah. And, and that happens and a that lot. Ha I was that say, that happens a lot, a lot of teachers. Yes. Um, but what I liked about, um, special ed is that my students could relate. Mm -hmm. Things mm -hmm. like, oh, Mr. Terry upset and, or Mr. Terry's, you know, happy or whatever it may be. And, but I always kept it real mm -hmm. and they kept and and they understand and, and, that. And I and I told them, I said, look, don't look at what somebody else says about you. Mm -hmm. Your only concern is what you think about yourself. And if you think little of yourself, that's how you're gonna treat that's yourself. How, yeah, exactly. I want you to think more of yourself. And and I and, and that's how I viewed education. That's how I viewed the teachers. I, I didn't try to be bigger than somebody or mm -hmm. anything like that. I just wanted to come to work and make a difference. But what happens, you run into adults. And you run into these good yes. and these bad things about the yes. education system. Yes, yes. Um, so was 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 your good your good was the give back that you had to you to the kids and the and the connection. Let's talk about some of the bad. Um. Well, some of the bad. Let's because we're just I, gonna I, keep it real for all the uh, audience out there. We're just gonna keep it real because <laughs> we both have been in these situations, so we're just gonna keep it real. I, I think one of the it, it I'm not gonna say there's a lot of bad, a lot of good, but things that really stuck out to mm -hmm. me. Whereas um, the the bullying and people think, what do you mean bullying? Teachers get bullied. And what I mean by that, if you're a first, second, third year teacher. Yes, you talk you have, about you, it. You have this quote unquote union or association talk about that's that. supposed, to, uh, supposed to protect you. They're useless because <laughs> talk about the that. principals can pretty much do and say what they want to a degree. Mm -hmm. And these first, second, third year teachers, they don't know any better. They're like, okay, I just want to keep a job. Mm -hmm. I, want to do I just this. got out of college. Yeah, yeah. I want to keep a job. So I'm just going to follow suit. Yeah. I'm not going to complain. I remember when I first started teaching, and um, I, I won't name the school, of course, but, name I, it. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember going there and feeling so less than because it was my first year. Um, usually you would think when it's your first year, you know, you, people would surround you with that, with that uh, love and all that good stuff. I didn't get that. So it made it. And, and I want to, I want to say this, it, when, when you don't get that love from your, from your peers, it makes it hard to go forth and be a good teacher to the students. So if the teachers aren't getting what they need, then it's hard for us to give the students what they need. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's on a case by case basis it meaning is. that you do have some administrators I've been to some schools where they, you know, I'm like, man, I love coming here. Mm -hmm. And I've been, to, I've yeah. been to some like, Shh, man, I, I'm just going to stay in the bathroom, ask the 15, 20 <laughs> minutes. I just going to tell my stomach hurt. I'll be there when I get there. But you hit on something. It's, I think when you talk about why some are leaving mm -hmm. or not coming, mm -hmm. now we can, we can talk about, okay, people aren't um, wanting to get into the major. Okay, let's put that to the side. Right. When, when, let's say you have 15 new teachers. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose probably 50% of them. Absolutely. The way they're treated. Yeah. It's off the way they're yeah. treated. You're, you're going to yeah. lose them. You know, because of the workload, um, you, you have to deal with, um, uh, I guess, unruly students. Mm -hmm. And then you have the inconsistent discipline policies. And I don't mean punishment. I mean discipline because... There's two, you know, there's a difference between punishment and discipline. It is very Punish, much so. Punishment is like, go to your room, shut the door, and mm -hmm. I want to hear from you. Discipline is go to your room, I'm going to be in there, we're going to talk about this. That's right. That's right. And what happens is you have a lot of students that are punished. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened, then they put right back into the classroom. Didn't have that conversation with the teacher. Lack of communication. So you cuss me out, but yet you can come you back come in. You come on back in. Lack of communication. Yeah. That goes, and in the breakdown... Once you put that child out of the classroom and that child goes to the office and that's right there, the breakdown of communication comes because I've been in that situation before. And then he just gets mosey back on into the classroom. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. What's happening? Well, the principal said I can just come back. I'm like, OK, well, yeah. there's that lack of communication that's in, embarked. But then I still have to go forth and teach 24 other students. Yeah. And, and that happened to me. And uh, I was very adamant. Not coming back in my class because, and I would tell them, and I, I was loud. 
when you allow this student to come back in, you've empowered this student. Yes. And some you other students him. to think that they can come in here yes. and call me what they want. Yes. Oh, hell no. And I said, I remember saying, like, oh, hell no. That's not happening. <laughs> it's not. It's not going down like that, it, right? No, it's not. I, I said, I but, have, let them, but let them cuss you out. Yeah, I literally have had <laughs> to walk out of a classroom and be like, you know what? Come on down. You know, call some administrators. Cause, and, it, and, it usually, and it's usually one or two. It's usually those one or two. I remember one time I was substituting and they let me know right off the bat, him and her, this is what's going to happen to you. And it happened to me. So if other teachers are telling me on my way in that it's going to happen to me, then they, the, the, the principals, the guidance counselors, they already know. Yeah. So what steps are they taking? Well, I think a lot of it, when you talk, you, you have two areas to deal with. You have the student mm -hmm. and then you, you have the teachers. Mm -hmm. And the, the students... There's this political chess game, meaning that you, you you only can suspend but so many students. If you suspend this many students, this is going to happen. Right. And then you have some schools where black students, for primarily male, are being disproportionately suspended at a higher rate. Oh yeah. For the same thing. Oh, you already know that's for, happening. For the same thing. Yeah, you know that's happening. So that, and then you have some teachers who come in, don't really have the proper training, don't know classroom management. And everyone's tolerance level is different. Yes, it is. Like you can walk to my class. Oh, oh, let's do this again. Step out. Mm -hmm. Step out. Mm -hmm. Let's come into uh, my class the right way. Now you may have another teacher. Ah, I'm not say anything. Student sitting there yelling. Or you may have that 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 teacher when a student comes in and blah 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 blah. Get out. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's really there's different teachers have different ways to come with it. To me, I think my way is a little bit more. Uh, I think manageable. Yeah, but you have to have the personality to do it. Right, you know, I'm like, hey, 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 let's do this again. If you, because you got some kids who tower you, some kids who are bigger than you, so you don't know. At at some point in times, you know, and then if you're a woman, you know, and you have this, um, I'll, I'll use my son for instance, a six foot giant, because my son was what five eight in 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 the seventh grade, seventh eighth grade. I'm only five four. So that intimidation is all was also is is also a big problem too because if they know they can intimidate you then then that that rolls over into the the, the abuse as well um, classroom abuse mm -hmm. so yeah let's let's talk about you have four great nuggets that you want to talk about tonight let's let's enter into those okay well one of them, um, well we kind of touched on all we, of them. we did <laughs> but um, one one of the key ones is uh, teacher recruitment and and retaining. Mm -hmm and because that's been a struggle yeah. but that's been a struggle for all counties but it's a big struggle now and mm -hmm. i think people will say well it's the pay you gotta pay them i'll be honest with you i i don't i know pay is a reason but i don't think pay is a big reason because mm -hmm. my thing is if i'm dealing with foolishness for sixty thousand dollars, and now you pay me a hundred i'm still dealing with foolishness, foolishness. <laughs> no matter that which way me. yes so what I'm getting paid, the what I'm getting paid for, but my thing, I'm about a peace of mind versus a piece of check. Okay. I gotta have my peace. Talk of mind. about that. Uh, that is desk. Okay. That was a nugget he dropped. <laughs> Repeat that again. Um, I gotta have a peace of mind. Yes. Versus a piece, piece of check. Of, yes. That that's just me. Because we do get older in this yeah. thing. And you know, I'm I'm 50 now. So uh <laughs> see, and he he threw it out there. He threw our ages out there because I like no, I, I'm 50. I ain't listen, he came you. in the building. I was like, I thought we were almost around the same age. He was like, I'm 50. I was like, okay, I'm gonna lex back because I ain't 50 yet. <laughs> I'm well on my way. But that peace of mind is is you know what? And I'm gonna tell you what, I don't have the tolerance that I used to have when I was 30. I don't have the tolerance. Um, so I I would too. I'd rather walk away and find another job that would give me the peace of mind. Instead of that, well, well, for me, I was in a position where I could walk away. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are teachers that are not in the right. position where they True. can walk yeah. away. Yeah, um, I'm um, military, so I have benefits from that. Mm -hmm. I have money that I put to the side, so I didn't necessarily need to retire from teaching mm -hmm. to get health benefits. Right, and okay. a lot of people will do, because health benefits it, 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 matters. it matters. It matters. It matters. Yes, so, a lot. So those teachers are now in a predicament where. They need to. They need tenure. Most of them have tenure, but then what good is tenure if they're not even listening to you? Yes. But then, so what happens? That's the good. mindset is like, well, you know what? I'm gonna come to work, do what I gotta do, and I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching to the contract. And the the days of having people come in in education and work 20, 30 years, the days is gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Them days is gone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Those teachers are hitting the road and quick. Yeah. Well, first of all, we can't even get them in the door. 
Yeah. And 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 one of the reasons, and I, you could say pay, but when you look at it, you have to look at the systemic issues that are going on with mm -hmm. education. One being the increased workload. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you have inconsistent discipline policies. Um, you have uh, some people with this uh, notion that, okay, I need to come in for strictly sports, so academics doesn't matter. Yes. Um, you, you that have, goes on a lot at the yeah, college level, too. Yeah. yeah. And you have the lack of professional development mm -hmm. or the professional development it, um, isn't really what it should be. Mm -hmm. You have these different systems. Or, um, that you have to use within the school system. Like you may use one for attendance, one for grades, one for reports, but the systems don't talk to one another. Mm -hmm. So now you, you, it's redundancy. Yes. And so, and and it just frustrates me. And um, I, I think what happens is when, especially this new new crop of uh, youth that's coming through. Oh yeah, and they're technology. Like, they're, they're like this, Shh, peace, I don't get to put up with this. And yeah. they believe in a heartbeat. Yes, yes, yes. And then, and, and, I remember when, when I first started off, we didn't have all this technology. Like huh. they have all this technology and they still can't seem to get it right. Um, they use electronic grade grade books. Um, we, we're having problems in all counties with children be account, being accounted. They ain't even there. Yeah. Being given grades that they don't even they never even earned. Um, Baltimore City, they talk about it a lot on, on, on Foxwood. They talk about it a lot, but it's also happening all over the place. So do you think that's just a tech? a technical error thing or because back in the day when we did when we did grades we had a we had a book and we wrote it down you know right, so and, is and it and anybody writing you know <laughs> yeah that. now i had to learn to i had to learn to get into that technical vibe but what i'm saying is you know is it because of lack of training that these teachers aren't getting well, or what well, you you basically hit hit the the hammer on the nail i think i said that right and there is a lack of training meaning that you have these systems that are introduced mm -hmm. and boom, you need to learn them right away. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't think that I'm, I'm saying it, you want to train a teacher the same way you would train a student. Absolutely. And what happens, Absolutely. they come in, well, you're a dirt learner. You should be able to pick it up like that. And it doesn't always work that way. No, no. And when you look at what happened with the virtual, mm -hmm. there were some systems that simply were not equipped to deal with virtual. I just so and there was no there's no troubleshooting. So what happened? You got a system that you troubleshoot. Now we have time to troubleshoot, so everything mm -hmm. doesn't work right. And 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 that's no fault of anybody it's because no one expected. We did not this, expect this to that. No. But then you learn from that. But what it made people realize: Hey, we can actually do virtual learning mm -hmm. because no one really wanted to do it. Now there may be a FTE thing that has to do with you know how you fund each student for school. That I don't know. But I'm like this. Everyone doesn't learn the same way. No, they don't. No, and they don't. If, if a student and a teacher mm -hmm. enjoys the virtual environment, mm -hmm. give then them that give opportunity. Give them that opportunity. To do it. I agree. And, and I think that I think that's one way you can increase mm -hmm. um, rec um, teacher recruitment. Only I agree. because there are there are teachers that that that's how they were trained. That's how mm -hmm. they learn. And of course, the classroom management may be a little bit different. Right. But they don't have to deal with the foolishness. I literally wrote I literally read a study the other day about home and hospital and how home and hospital, they they literally are being trained on virtual. So the child never miss, even if they're home. Because I remember when when I had fell and broke my uh, broke my ankle and I had to stay home in hospital. That was what I the teacher, the lady had to come to the house and all that. But then I, I lost my social skills and all that good stuff because I wanted to be in school. But now they literally could have now they can literally put the child that's homesick into the classroom, a virtual into the classroom virtually to where they still can participate and they can still feel like they're being social and, and all that I think that 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 was that's a great that's a great thing. That that it I would say it is and it isn't. Okay. It all depends on the individual. Me, I'm a very outgoing person. I like to talk. I like to move around. Virtual would suck for me. Right. I, I couldn't do it. I have to get up and I have to move around. And the thing about it, when, you know, I use my son as an example. He's in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. He was in eighth grade doing virtual. He never got an opportunity to experience what it's like to be an eighth grader walking around school. Wow. Socializing. I was just conflict saying, what did that, resolution. I was just getting ready to time say, management. what they, did that do to his mental? Well, that's with everyone. Yeah, that, that was it, with everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. with everybody. And I, I think when the students came back to school, 
my opinion, they should have did it in phases, ninth graders for two weeks. And then that way you can kind of give them an expectation of, of what they should be doing, mm -hmm. how they should mm -hmm. behave, mm -hmm. different scenarios. But it was like, boom, let's get in class straight to academics. But then forgot the social part and the yes. mental part. Yes, yes. And, yes. That, and then that, they wonder why my, things yeah. are going on in the school system now. Because they're leaving out that social, that social and that mental piece. Mm -hmm. You know, everything, everything that's thrown out for education, it's just not you learn textbook style. You got to learn. to, and, and what happened to I mean, I remember in home economics, we had to learn how to get along and we had to get groups and make cakes and do all this stuff. And then I remember in Woodshop, we we all had to work on a birdhouse together. They were they were taking us and showing us how to work together. I remember uh, Mr. Norris. We, we were we were in the Edgewood locker room and, and, and the girl we were in there with we the girls. We were they were fighting and everything. And, you know, he made us do Kumbaya. All every time, yeah. listen, we we all had to sit together. He was like, I don't care if y'all don't like one another or not, but over here, you're gonna learn. Yeah, they don't do any of those things mm -hmm. anymore to teach them to to what it looks like to to that togetherness. Well, that's what I was talking about with the, the punishment and the mm -hmm. discipline. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a, I got into you know a, a, a call to fight, whatever it was, and I could have been written up, mm -hmm. you know, but they said, No, you won't come together. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have this discussion now. If you won't participate, then, then there's something else. Yeah, for there's you. something else. Yeah. So I always felt that was the the best way. Mm -hmm. But then you find out nine times out of ten, of something stupid. It was. It was. And yeah. and 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 like I said, that that part that part of school is is now over. It's now over. And and again, who is addressing that? Well, I, I think one way that we can address in that um, is that mentoring part. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've been doing for years is giving back, meaning that I had village dads that helped raise me and mentor me. Mm -hmm. um, if I was a freshman, there were seniors I looked up to. If um, And what happened when I, you know, I had great teachers who looked, uh, that helped me on my academic level mm -hmm. and my athletic level. You mentioned Coach Norris, mm -hmm. um, was Coach Slagle, his father Ken. Yes, on my academic, yes, there was Mr. Yes. McAvoy. Mr. McAvoy, oh my um, goodness. There was Mr. Wait, did he Mr. Just Tall. Pay, didn't he just pass? No, nah, he, he passed a couple, couple years, years ago. A couple years ago, okay. Um, Mr. Tall was, Mr. was Tall. He, he, yeah. And then you, you had those ones that were straight shooters. And literally, mm -hmm. It was it, they transformed the way that I looked at academics. Yes, Miss Sharon and Coach Tadero. Yes, you know, may they rest in peace. Because the, Miss Sharon said, "Look, she didn't like where I was headed. She didn't like the people I was hanging around." She mm -hmm. said, "Derek, you were smart, but you don't want to be labeled as smart." Mm -hmm. And said, "You got three options: you can go to jail, mm -hmm. you can die, or you <laughs> yeah. can be out there on the streets. Which mm -hmm. one you want?" I went, "I don't want none of them." Right? No. So, that's, said, so, they you, so she said, "What do you want?" Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I want to go ahead and fulfill the promise I made to a friend of mine, which was to graduate mm -hmm. um, and to do what I'm supposed to do. But I, I was going through some things. Yeah, and and that a lot of a lot of our students are going through things, and and, and a lot of the students come to school for coping mechanisms. But again, I wanted to step into this really quick. If if the teachers aren't well, then the students aren't going to be well because if they're coming to us and we're not well. You know, and, and, and there's tobacco around us because I'm telling you something that them, those teachers lounges ain't they're not always the most friendliest places to be. Yeah, right. Especially and when, like you said, when you're a first year, second year, even third year. Hey, you could even be 10, 10 years in and you got that new squad of teachers that come in and it's all a change. But I still think that within the school system um, and I'm, I'm at a university level now, but I still feel as though in the system. We have so much brokenness and, and and the teachers are getting younger and younger. Yeah. And I think there's there's an absence of the old school mm -hmm. teacher. There's an yeah, absence, there's a big absence of the old school counselor because and like I use Coach Tadero, for instance, he was old school, but he knew what I was going. He was mm -hmm. one of the few that knew what I was going through um, when I lost a friend because I would come speak to him. You know, I didn't want to speak to a woman because I didn't want her to see me cry and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I would speak to her. So he was the social part, although mm -hmm. he was, I don't even think he was my counselor, mm -hmm. but because, I, you know, I ran track and all that, that's somebody that I could confide in. Right. And then Ms. Sharon, I could confide in her on the academic. Mm -hmm. And then I progressively got better. Right. So what I took from that is like, okay, how can I 
progressively get someone else better. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been mentoring for years, not knowing I was mentoring. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if Carlos is looking here, but like Carlos Putney oh, and, yeah. and Damon. I remember when they were training for football. I said, look, man, how can I help you? all Not knowing that I was actually mentoring them mm -hmm. because they looked up to us. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, to, I wanted to make Absolutely. sure that I wasn't trying to be positive. I guess I just was. Mm -hmm. Not realizing the impact down the road. Um, when um, I joined, um, you know, I'm 26 years as a, as an alpha life member. But one of the things that we do is we we it's scholarship and we develop leaders. Yes. And those leaders, they start out young because mm -hmm. you have to start them out young. Yeah. And you know, when you go into this thing, I've, I've heard you. I, I'm sitting here, and in, in, in my mind, I the word uh, mindset came to me. You changed your whole mindset. Yeah, because and and we don't have a lot of and 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 again we're not we're not throwing anything, but we don't have a lot of males that will literally walk in and change their mindset. Because when you you were talking about when you first started, you know you you were you hey listen I'm doing I'm going to do what I want to do until those teachers came to you and they literally had had you say listen this is what's going to happen to you and you had to literally take that point and that moment to change your mindset. And now that your mindset has changed, you see, you see, you saw the road ahead of you. Yeah, but you have to, if you don't come in with the as an educator, well, I, I find this in everything that I do, Jared. I literally was a project kid, one of seven. One of seven was destined to go nowhere. And was destined now, to go. I never looked at it that way, I but, was, I, but I can see what I you're was, saying because, because again, people outside looking in, right, but vegan because terrorists, again, they're thinking, right, oh, because that's the again, market. because again, you know, we're conditioned. We were conditioned in that lifestyle. You know, if, if you know, my mom was had seven kids by herself. So a lot of the kids in our neighborhood, they they they, they weren't going anywhere. So in my mind, I put it in my mind, I'm a part of this community. I'm a part of this. I, I, I wasn't destined. It took me, it took me to have my own children to understand and change my mindset. But the mindset has to change in yeah. order for you to be projectory anywhere in anything that you do. Because when you came, you was like, man, I lost track of you for a couple of years. I no, I went under the radar because I was working on me. Yeah, because I know that the other thing that, that resonates with me. And I, I can't remember who who said the quote, but it's something I used to, I was, you know, when I was teaching, I used to always have these quotes, quotes around and I would always tell students, it's not your attitude, but your out. I mean, sorry, now I missed it up. It's not your, I can't get the quote right around. It's not your attitude. Mm -hmm. No, no, my, no, it's your attitude, not your aptitude that determines your aptitude. It, 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 and all that. I don't know why I couldn't remember that quote. Well, it's because you're 50. <laughs> it's because you're 50. I, I'll, I'll step out there and say it. We've been friends for a long time. I'll step out there and say it's because you're 50. But that 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 right there is just like I said. You went into mentoring and didn't even know you were mentoring because your whole mindset had changed at that point. You well, know? well, well. The other thing is that, and there's another quote. You know, life becomes a little bit easier when you get rid of negative people. Oh my goodness! I talk about OQP. What's that? Only quality people. Because yeah. I, I tell people, I don't need any new friends. I just need better friends. Yes. And and don't get me wrong. I and, don't mind new and friends. And one thing about it is, one of the things that that a friend of our, a friend of mine, um, uh, Keisha, um, she's a good friend of ours. She was at, she was just at Brass Mill. One of the things her and I talked about last week was, if you're the smartest person in your group, then you don't belong in that group. You don't, you don't belong because who feeds you? If you're the smartest person and you're feeding everybody else, then who feeds you? Yeah, my, my dad used to always tell me, he'd be like, look, you ain't got to be the smartest. But don't be the dumbest. Don't be the dumbest. <laughs> don't be the dumbest. So let's move on to one of your second, that would be your third nugget, I think. Second or third nugget. that Because uh, you, you have some really good ones. I think I kind of jumped around. Uh, That's that 50. I've still got a couple years to go. Yeah, it is the 50. <laughs> well, I, well, actually, I don't even need this point. I don't really need to do this. The, the other part, uh, I, I guess, the thing that stands out is, is special education. And as a special educator, it is very frustrating when you have the system not working for the student. Now, let me put this on, in, I, I guess, in more perspective. When you are a teacher, mm -hmm. your alliance is to the system first. Mm. 
you know, that's what they tell you. It's the system mm -hmm. first. Then it's to the student. Hmm. To me, when you're a case manager, special ed, because we're following federal guidelines, my allegiance and my alliance, it's with that student. That, which means that if the system is saying something that I don't agree with, mm -hmm. I have an obligation to educate not only the student, but that parent. Mm -hmm. And what I found is like, wow, they really need an advocate. Wow. And I'm, I'm, I should be the advocate, but you're like, no, you can't say that. I'm like, why not? I was like, and it's like, why are we playing games with, with these kids' lives? Mm -hmm. So when I eventually got out of um, teaching, I became an advocate. So that's how, you know, EvoCare, which we, you, you educate, advocate, and we care. Because primarily, and I really wanted that to be a nonprofit, but I just didn't feel like doing all the paperwork. So I, I offer a lot of pro bono assistance to uh, families with special needs children on the IEP process, um, um, how to even with the meetings. So tell us a little bit about what the, what an IEP is. Well, for, individual, we have some, I'm sorry, individual education program. Yes. People say it's a plan, but it's a program. It's a program, yes. And Well, you know, for a while they called it a plan. Well, they did. I was trained to call mm -hmm. it a program. They, they did call it so, a plan. But, mm -hmm. it, but it's a program designed to fit specific needs of students with mm -hmm. accommodation modifications because some of them have uh, specific learning disabilities. They could have um, ADHD or attention deficit, um, hyper disorder, hyperactivity disorder. And there could be a host of other disabilities. Right, exactly. But the key is making sure that the program is designed mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And what I was finding was some of the programs were not. Now, some of that can be attributed to because there is and always been a shortage of special ed teachers. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I first started teaching Baltimore City, my caseload was 30. Wow. And we that's were right, lot. and we were writing. <laughs> that's a lot. We were writing IEPs. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. And but then the parental involvement. Mm -hmm. So um, one of, for me, the, the, so how we um, recruit, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily recruit, but how we improve special education is by doing your job. Meaning that school systems, you are there to assist that student. Exactly. And what happens, they start looking at the student as a dollar sign. Because mm -hmm. they do get more. Yeah, it's a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. stop, and I, I think when you stop looking at them as a thing versus a person, mm -hmm. then we can improve. And it's about relationships. Because when the parents feel like you care, mm -hmm. like I don't give them a feeling, I actually care. But when you, they feel like you care, they're easy to work with. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the student is going to have a, um, a uh, that they're, they're going to improve from a first grade reading level to a fifth grade reading level in one year. Right. But there should be some improvement. Mm -hmm. And when there is an improvement, then we have to address why. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's where the case manager comes in play. You know, is, are all the teachers um, following the IEP? That's one of the things I'm glad you said because again, I won't throw the name of the school out, but say it. <laughs> but I had I had some issues with that because I had about three three students in one of my classes, and they they weren't even though the plan that we call it a plan, you call it a program. Mm -hmm. Um, was there, they weren't, so I had one child that had, was supposed to get a certain amount of hours. And I noticed that they weren't getting that. So when I questioned it. The related service hours? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I questioned it, I was, I was almost darn near blackballed because they're like, wait a minute, you need to stay in front of the class. That's what we pay you for. You don't need to worry about that. But that's my student. Yeah, and I've been there. It's like that's my student. So I need to make sure that my student is getting everything because literally when that plan is given to us, that is legal binding. That is a plan and you have to follow it. So I remember standing almost on uh on the when I tell you the biggest bullhorn because this child was falling so behind, but yet you guys weren't meeting his needs. Yeah, and and I think the the, the other thing, you know, although we're we're focusing on special education. It's just accountability. Mm -hmm. That's said, a big one. I, I don't think people will get upset if they say, you know what? We messed up. Let's, this is how we're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. and, and and I currently reside in Charles County, and I'm a big stickler on accountability and transparency. Mm -hmm. And if something is going wrong, man up or woman up and say, you know what? This is what happened. We're gonna. This is what we're gonna do to fix it. Versus either being silent mm -hmm. or trying to point fingers. 
like, for, you know, I don't know if you saw it in the news, but, you know, we had a, a Confederate flag that was uh, put at a high school. Now, mm -hmm. some people say, well, you know, it's a high school prank. I don't give a damn. It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. Everything about it is just wrong. wrong. It's yeah. wrong. I've said, there's nothing you can tell me from a historical standpoint where there's a positive in that with a treacherous mm -hmm. way. Because they're tre you know, treason. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care. And I may offend some people out there. Deal with it. Because, he's not, he's and not I'm complaining. From, he's no, just saying. Yeah, and I'm from Alabama originally. Now, if you want to praise the flag, mm -hmm. there's a museum. Because it should be told this is what the purpose of the flag is. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is that when we have to stop making excuses for what people consider to be normal behavior. behavior. Yes. Not, oh, yeah. my goodness. I, I, and, I, I, I say yeah. that all the time. And I think that's part of the problem with the school system. Mm -hmm. Because back in the day, you, who did you cuss out? No, nobody. And I don't remember nobody. I, I remember uh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Schatz, and he's still he he's still a friend of mine on my Facebook page. Yeah. I remember him letting let us know right then and there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He he was one of the he was one of, he was at Edgewood Elementary School. He was one of the best male teachers I ever had, and 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 he's still still kicking is and we still conversate. But I remember he was the first one to hold me responsible for the behavior that I chose to, and I never forget. He said, "Your mama don't act that way." And I, I remember telling all oh, I was mouthy. I was telling him all kinds of yeah, stuff. But he held me accountable but, but for that go, behavior. But it goes back to the old school that teacher. That old school teacher. And what happened, I don't know what's going on with some of these teaching programs, but I, I think what happened as we evolved, so did a sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. Because it was unheard of. Now you cuss, but it's unheard of to cuss out a teacher. Oh yeah, it was, it was unheard, unheard of, of to fight, fight a teacher. teacher. <laughs> yes, it, saying, we might fight each other, yeah. but it was unheard of. Yeah. And now it's it's like it's just normal. And, and so how do you fix it? They just you, normalize yeah. so much but, now. But you can fix it, and there's some schools that are doing this. You can fix it through restorative practices. You can, you know, some schools are what they call PBIS, is positive behavior intervention. It's been a good while since I've been out of school, but. Basically, it, it's it, it's a pot. You, you know, you're you're reinforcing um, positive behavior mm -hmm. with reward. You're not rewarding negative behavior with rewards. But what you're doing is kind of teaching them. Okay, look, this is what you did wrong. This is how we correct it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what happens is be and and then the other thing, and I think we had talked about this um, earlier when you talk about the drugs, the alcohol, oh, yeah. and all the other stuff. Oh, that's yeah. nothing new. It's nothing new. It's we, nothing we, new. We, we did. We went for that yeah. for a minute. Yeah. And and, and I, for those of you who are out there, what we were talking about is the problem that they're having in, in, in the school system with this drugs and alcohol. That was nothing new. Yeah. And and we both have been out of school many, many years. Yeah. And, and, and we were talking about, you know, the Route 40 corridor chamber. Like yeah. we, if, if something went there, we were, I'm going to talk about Edgewood. If something hey, hey, if, wrong with Edgewood. If, Edgewood if, High, baby. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Edgewood High School. We never, we, I, I never experienced the time in all the years that I went to all Edgewood schools that there was, and now they, somebody might have had a gun, but we were, I never saw a gun. Yeah, because what happened? I never saw this, a gun. This, this right here yeah, is, is, why, making it everything, is why people think it's so new. It's, 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 it's not new. No, it's not new. It's not new. There's been drugs and alcohol, sex, and all that in schools forever. But the key is, how do we fix it? Now, again, again, again. and And you fix it by holding them accountable, accountable. but yes. the other thing you have punishment and you have discipline mm -hmm. there's nothing normal about having sex in school there's nothing normal no. about doing drugs in school there's no. nothing normal about drinking in school no it's not, not normal all. so if it isn't normal and we talked about this earlier then you have to address it as a some type of mental problem don't make it right exactly doesn't make it right but you have to address it because if you don't address it guess what it just it's a pass the buck that is good. And you just repeat the behavior unless you have somebody like a Miss Sharon or um, a Coach Tadero mm -hmm. that can pull you in mm -hmm. and let and, you know. And, and let you know. But then it's up to you mm -hmm. to take the advice. Well, a, a lot of times, too, you know, I, I, re, I, don't, I, I remember my mom when I got in trouble. I knew when Shirley was coming. I knew I knew that was, I had already got in trouble in school. I, I already got in trouble by the principal. So I knew when my mom was coming, I knew that she was going to deal with me. Nowadays, you got, to, you got somehow, sometimes you have two parents living in the household and, and there's still no time for discipline. 
Yeah, but, but that's and, where and where you have a one parent household where there's still no time for this because mom is always working or the dad is always mm -hmm. working. So I'm wondering, are, are we because I came up in a household to where my mom was always home. You know, she was home when I got off the bus. So I already knew what my expectations were when, when I went to school and when I got off the bus. So I'm wondering also, I'm, I'm not throwing any blame, but I'm wondering, are, are we stopping the accountability? We're not holding the parents accountable either. Well, it's just yes enough. Because how do you not know your child didn't go to school for 48 days? Someday. Yeah. I, I how do you? I, yeah. I just I just heard it on, on the news the other day. The lady was fighting the fact that, that she had to go to court and she had to do weekends because of truancy. And she said, I don't know. I, I, how do you not know your child did not report for 48 days? Was, was the child at home? He, he was out doing whatever. And so, the, so the maybe, reason, well, she probably thought he went to school. And, but wait a minute, you, 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 didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get no progress reports. You didn't get no. You, come on, there's certain things that come home to a parent that, that we supposed to see. Well, my, my, the, way, the reason why. It, he got all caught up because he was in a stolen vehicle oh, okay. during the time that he was supposed to be at school. And this is what brought it all around to the bend. And she was complaining that she felt as though she should not have had to have done the weekends. Well, you have to be responsible for your child. Yeah. And, and I think you have to have that line of communication with that yeah. parent and, 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 and that teacher. Yeah. And, you know? and, and on that part, I do agree. But then you have parents that are doing everything they can. Mm hmm. And the and I talked about village dads, mm -hmm. the village concept, and that's where the mentoring comes in. It does, and you know, and 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 I and I keep talking about all the people that helped me. Mm -hmm. This is one reason why you know, with fraternity, we we had an organization um, called Alpha Lights, where um, a group of my uh, frat brothers, we mm -hmm. literally took kids from sixth grade mm -hmm. all the way to twelfth grade. They all graduated. That's a blessing. And they got and we gave them a scholarship. Um, there's another foundation I work with, um, like the Way Foundation, which we provide um, educational enrichment and youth programs. But we also do a summer film camp at Howard University where we offer scholarships. Shout out to Howard, yes. We, yeah, we, we <laughs> offer scholarships in Charles County, uh, Prince George's County, in D.C. and some of the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. So those, those scholarships are worth about $500 for a week. They don't have to pay for it. That is amazing. But, but they get the they get an opportunity to make a film. So we have a question here. I'll let you go ahead and read the question. Can no, you, oh, oh he don't have his glasses on. Hold up for a second. I, okay. Was she that one? Oh, so was, yeah. Uh -huh. Was she ever notified, or was there an attempt to contact her? So it's, it's Daryl, I hope I'm saying Darrell, your name, Darrell, Darrell Gray. We, uh, our eyes are playing tricks on us because we're almost 50. So his question was, was she ever notified or was there an attempt to contact her? Um, she did not She did not say um, if there was an attempt to contact her, but I'm quite sure because I remember the truancy officer, Daryl, saying, um, Darrell saying that he had gone there many times, but no one was home. So what I want to do is I want to talk about my own situation that I had with my with my older son. I was sending him to school. We lived in Joppa Town. He walked to school. I was sending him to school and I was catching the train to work. This joker, okay, this joker, my son, who knew better, he was going to Joppa Town High School. He was going in the front door. He was eating breakfast, being accounted for, and was gone all day. And then he would come back in because, you know, they didn't lock the locker room doors. Oh, yeah. And he would come back in just enough time for the bell to ring. Okay. How did they How did they notify me? They never notified me, Darrell. The way I got notified, my son was at a house. Okay. And the mother of the house was a nurse. She had had some type of surgery and they gave her liquid Percocet. So these boys are in her house, rumbling through, misbehaving. My son takes some of, well, I'm sorry, he didn't take it. Somebody put some of it in his soda. Okay. He's watching it all go on though, but he didn't know they put it in his soda. He about lost his whole mind. I had police come to my job. They had to take him to the hospital. I mean, it was a mess. He was out of his mind. But then that's when the school notified me that he hadn't been there for. Oh, I said, wait a minute. He was supposed to be at school during this time. So when I went back to the school to get some answers from them, oh, 
first time they told me Derek, they didn't even know. Then I started going to his teachers and they're like, no, he wasn't here. No, he wasn't here. Well, I, I but I could have stopped that ball from happening had they notified me, Darrell. I could have stopped that from happening. Well, I think, well, I can't speak for Hartford County, but I know in Charles County, if if my son is late to a class, I get a phone call, automated system. So hopefully those type of things are in place now. In place now. now, yeah. Oh, this this is, this is, and you know what? Those, I, I come to think about it, those phone calls were being, they, they I never received one, but again, he was slick enough what well, doesn't matter if you don't come to first period, second See, that, period. That, we need more things like that. See, so and maybe in some, and, and Harford County may have it now. I don't know. I but I know so. in Charles County that my son is late first. And I'm like, why would you like the class? You know, I look at him. So he's, I was in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But so most of the students know, at least in Charles County, that a phone call is going to come. But the, there you go with that word, though, that, that word that, that you use, accountability. Yeah accountability accountability it, it, it's, it's just i just see it where it's being belabored in the school system and then when you do go to hold somebody accountable we, we never know what the action that was taken to towards the teacher or, or even towards the school well I, I think when we talk about the good and the bad in education account you know how much accountability costs oh i'm just <laughs> zero it costs you no money it but guess nothing. what if you're not accountable how much you think it's going to cost? Oh, it costs a whole bunch. Yes. So it's caused, my, it's caused lives. Yeah. Okay. It's it's caused some of some of these uh, school shootings that are going on. It costs it's, money. It's costing lawsuits. money. Lawsuits. Uh, I mean, just a whole bunch. It, so so when when I talk about solutions, I'm saying these are solutions that don't even cost anything. Mm -hmm. But if you, like I said before, if you don't change the mindset. That's right. Your uh, mindset then, is everything and everything. Then you're going to continue to go down mm -hmm. the cycle and repeat the behavior. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that if school systems, and don't get me wrong, I love public school. I'm not a big fan of charter schools. So only because I feel like that money being sucked away and whatever. School choice only works, in my opinion, if you have, if it's accessible to everyone. To everybody, yes, I agree. It has to be accessible. I want to agree. You, with you that. have to have mass yes. transit. So yes. if you live in an area that doesn't have mass transit, then to me, it's not accessible. It's not accessible yeah. because yeah. what what do you say to the parents who don't can't get their the son or daughter mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. But when we talk about accountability, everyone needs to be held accountable. Everybody, everybody, I'm the teacher, the student, mm -hmm. the parent, mm -hmm. the administrator, mm -hmm. the bus driver, mm -hmm. and all the things that we try to teach the students, if we're not doing them as adults, that's right. That's then, right. I guess what you think the students are doing. That's right. Because we we we're opposed there to to uphold the behavior, and if we're if we're not doing it right, so that you talked about that earlier about the mental health that these teachers, uh, the mental stabilities and the mental abuse that they go through. Right. So just imagine if you are a first, not even a first year teacher, a teacher in general, and you're having a hard time. Uh, 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 controlling your classroom, and and you're at the at the brink of a mental breakdown, and you go and you report that, and they're like, oh no, you 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 don't have any more off time. Yeah, that that has happened. Yeah, that has happened. You don't have any more off time, so I'm just need you to deal with it. So when when you get to the point where you deal with it, and, and you didn't you didn't lost your whole mind in that classroom. Yeah, and like then I'm, what? And I'm I'm and that somewhat happened to me, meaning that. My grandfather had passed away not too long after my uncle and my cousin had passed away. And literally, school started two weeks after that. So mm. when I came to the school, and we, I, I, you know, I told the administrator, I said, look, I said, I just need about a week to just grieve. Mm -hmm. um, can I be excused from all this professional development? Um, because and I don't I don't recall mentioning PTSD because I wasn't diagnosed. Now mm -hmm. I am diagnosed with PTSD. But to be honest with you, that probably saved part of what saved my life. Hmm. Because I was going through a nervous and it was two types of nervous breakdowns. It is. It is I, several, it's like I, several I literally, types of I literally had to stay home. I couldn't go back to work for like almost two and a half months mm -hmm. because I had to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. So I was getting. I'm glad depressed. you made that choice. I'm getting, to, but I, it was my second round of counseling. That's okay. I don't and care how many rounds. No, no. But it was my second round, and then through that second round, 
I found out a lot about myself mm. that was dormant. And um, and I think I mentioned to you before, you know, although we're talking about, you know, this book, um, I'm not complaining. I'm not I'm just complaining. Saying, I'm just saying. I, it through the, I would guess the encouragement and support of my wife, I was able to write my second book. I'm, I'm excited for that. Which is, um, don't judge a book by its cover. I'm excited. And it deals with uh, mental health. And this but, is Mental Health yeah, Awareness yeah. Month. That's another reason why I have you on, because yeah. this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And 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 what the teachers are going through on that mental aspect of it, and, and the good and the bad that's going on through our education system, it, it weighs a toll on all of us mentally. Yeah. I, my children are grown. OK, my children are not in school, but my grand my grandkids are in school. And it, it, I, when I hear things like that, it still embarks on me mentally. I'm I'm still in the in the education field. And and I told you, I said, I'm about burnt out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about burnt out. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. And I'm still working for schools. I'm still working for for the education system. I'm burnt out because I no longer have that option to go and say I'm not OK. You know what they tell me? Oh, we don't have anybody to cover your class. We, we as teachers, we that has been stripped from us. Yeah. And so, so, so for for me to go and tell a student, I told a student this a couple of weeks ago. Hey, and my son just said it on his show last night. Check in, check in on your people. It's okay not to be okay. But when a teacher professor comes and says, "I'm not okay," well, you know what? Did you put your slip in? No, this morning I woke up and I realized yeah. that I'm not okay. Yeah, and, and then they talk about, well, you got two classes. I'm like, but you, again, you're you're argumentative with me, but I'm coming and telling you mentally I'm not okay. So we lost that. We lost that battle to say I'm not okay. But then they want us to go forth. But then that shows through. Yeah, because what what I say to school systems, and th there's probably maybe some people out here that uh, work in these school systems, some people running for offices mm -hmm. in school systems, mm -hmm. is that if the same passion and vigor that you have for our kids, as far as their uh, mental uh, well-being, it needs to be taken just as seriously, not only for teachers, but support staff. And you have to give them a sense of, you know what, it's gonna be okay. Things do happen, but what you have to realize is that teachers have feelings. Yes, they we have do. emotions. Yes, we do. And you can't keep telling them, you know what, deal with it. Because how can I put it? Um, well, just like I said, I, I need a peace of mind versus a piece of check. Mm -hmm. I got to have my peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your peace of mind, I, I care less about the check because. What will happen if you don't get those services, those needs? You have, unfortunately, you have those who may quit, commit suicide, um, maybe uh, chokehold. Uh, yeah, we just I, we just saw that we just and, saw that on the news where you know a gentleman yeah. a gentleman was yeah. accused of of, of choking yeah. a student, and I'm like, what well, did did he ever? You know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Um, did he report that he wasn't okay that day and you made him go forth anyway? I don't know. I'm not making any excuses. Yeah, I'm not making any excuses because because you shouldn't be putting your hands on anybody else's children. Yeah. And, and that's not what that's not what you're there for. But I'm just saying, and I'm not I'm not taking up for um I'm not taking up for uh, for his behavior. But again, who do we have? to go and say these things to. Children have guidance counselors and all these other people. But once I remember walking into my boss's office and I was like, listen, I, I, I'm going through something right now. And, and, and I remember saying, well, go down to HR, put in your leave time, blah, blah, blah. I get down there, she talking about, well, you only got, you know, you use your, you use your mental health day. How many days did I have? Because I remember only having one time being <laughs> also, how many days did I truly have? But yet you have me teaching more than 200 days yeah and i think one of the things that the school systems can do is you know at, at some point in time administrator used to be a teacher yes and if they've been an administrator for so many years they forgot what it's like to be a teacher oh yeah won't you go back in for about two weeks or mm -hmm. whatever come come from behind that desk yeah, because and really do so yeah, because at the end of the day you really have to live it mm -hmm. in order to get it yeah 
And if you're not great, if, if, if you stop living it, <laughs> think about it, if you stop living it, yeah. how can you get it? Yeah. Great. That's and, a great nugget right there. And that's my quote. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna take it, but we no, threw but, it out there. But 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 really, just to be, in all seriousness, is that I think sometimes people forget where they start. Mm -hmm. So it's like I knew I'm from Alabama, raised Southern, mm -hmm. but I grew up uh, most of my life in Edgewood. Mm -hmm. I didn't forget where I came from. No. So I could go to Beverly Hills. I'm still gonna be there from Edgewood. <laughs> and I, listen, you know. I, 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 I can and listen. Oh. I don't, Edgewood will never come out of me. Yeah, or the wood. What I, or the, yeah, the wood, the yeah, E, whatever yeah. they want to call it. It's never going to, that, that, that Trimble Road will never come out of me. Yeah, like I live in Charles County. I'm in Waldorf. But guess what? I still have a wood mentality. Mm -hmm. I still have a Birmingham mentality, meaning mm -hmm. that I, I come in with a mindset of knowing certain things because the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. I was raised Southern. So I, I, I can, you know, I know when someone's throwing a dog whistle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. So it's things like that. So, and my dad would say, look, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I'm from a lot of places, but right now I'm in Charles County. And while I'm in Charles County, I, I, I want everyone that's there to know that, you know, our issues aren't any different from anybody else's no, issues. No, no. The thing is, how do you handle it? You know, the, I, and one thing I want, I want to say before we, uh, before we wrap up, this is a nationwide issue. Mm -hmm. This is a this is not a, a a rep from where you are, where you've been. This is a nationwide issue, the good and bad in the school system, because we we it's it's, it's not all bad. No. But when when your teachers aren't getting what they need to to progress in every every inch of being that educator, it becomes bad. Yeah, because 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 you got some good teachers, you got some good teachers yeah. who have turned bad. Yeah, for for. Whatever for a reason. source yeah. of different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you also have to understand that, I, and I want to say this, anybody that's out there watching, understand us educators, we have lives outside of education. Yes, Lord. We have, right. we have lives outside of education. So I always go on the matter, the matter of fact of you, you don't know what someone else is going through. So to have that go through on in your home and then you get to your job and the go through is still there. And then you got to put on this mask to, to teach these children, because one thing about it is children, they pick up. Yeah. They and pick, they take, pick and up. They take 30 seconds. They, they yeah. are. Let me tell you, those little creatures and then them, oh, even even now I teach adults. OK, but they know a hey, doc, doc, you know. Wait a minute, Doc's usually happy. What's going on? You know, I had a bad day. But they don't expect us to have a bad day. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I, I mentioned in, in my new book is that some you have seen or heard me laugh. Mm -hmm. you, you have seen and, and maybe heard me smile. If you can hear someone smile. Some people have seen and heard me eat. Mm -hmm. Some people have seen me work out. Mm hmm but you can't see mental illness. No, you, no, you can't. You, no, you, you and can't. They, they think if you yeah. act out, if they think if you yeah. act out one time, that's mental illness. That's not. Nah. That's you not. can't see it. Because, you can't see it because I'm all and and what I learned is all the time. That's how I was hiding. Mm -hmm. You were masking it, and um, it, it's it was it's been an emotional roller coaster. I will say that because well, when, because you, because I when I when I wrote this book when mm -hmm. I wrote this book it was therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And it what was, about the second book? Is what's the, the second book? So second, that one? second book is therapeutic, but it's also hopefully mm -hmm. to erase the stigma, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in black men. That oh, let's talk need, about it. If you need to get help, get that help. This is this is Mental Health Awareness yeah. Month, and I would say men in general. I'm saying men just have an issue, but black men worse because I, we are you, culturally I, raised please, this way. Please talk about that yeah. because I have kings that I'm raising and, and I have taught them. I have taught them that alpha male, that ego, that pride. There, there's a time and a place for all that. But my concern is if you're not okay, it's okay for you not to be okay. That's when you have to seek out that help because what you're going to do, what you're going to do, you're going to keep destroying. Because yeah, I didn't. You think, you keep you keep you have good people in your life that you're just discarding. You know my thing. I was so busy with trying to help everyone else. You forgot about I, you. I huh? forgot about me. 
Oh, and that and and, and that's that's the thing. And we do. Yeah. And as I forgot about me, it was impacting my family mm -hmm. because I was putting so much energy in helping out other people mm -hmm. and wasn't focused on the family. And you know, I, I you know I can well I can be an example, and hopefully everyone can be an example. Had it not been for therapy, I probably wouldn't be here. That that mental health thing is that mental health thing and, uh, is 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 and and and, and, I, and I thank God for the fact of the matter that you were able to identify and get the help that you needed. I thank God for your wife who 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 who, who stood steadfast. She could have just rolled out, but she stood yeah. steadfast. And I thank God for her being in your life. Period. Because, period. Because at the end of the day, with any problem, you first have to acknowledge you have, have the a problem. problem. Because and if you don't acknowledge it, can I can I say it? this? Can I say this because we're like a brother and sister thing here, right here, right here, right here. Come on, because we were like my young, seven, my, my seven. Young yeah, we were seven and four, seven <laughs> and, and, and 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 five or whatever that age yeah. way be that bracket was. I literally have a problem with the fact of the matter. Um, and my son calls it the old man ego. Well, we have so many of these older men that are not seeking help. And they're and what they're doing is they are destroying because they're teaching their sons not to seek this help. And the this cycle just keeps going on and on and on. And, and we have some who are taking their lives, some who some who are just watching this just transpire. And then you have some who are literally seeking to destroy it, not not just women, but to destroy everything in front of them because they won't seek the help that they needed. Yeah, and, and not knowing that indirectly and in some cases directly mm -hmm. it affects the school system it does and how it they does. behave because guess what that 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 child that was sitting there watching what you went through he got to go to school yeah. and what he gonna do he's gonna do the same thing is called repeat behavior yeah just like you have repeat offenders you have repeated behavior and you have those teachers who may not have got what, what they, they needed, needed and then they're they bring that in so it, it's uh, uh what what i will say is with this book being therapeutic, everything that I write is therapeutic. Writing is therapy for me, but I want it to have a purpose, meaning mm -hmm. just like your show, know your, know your purpose. purpose. And that's why that's my, why we have you here. My purpose really for writing this book was just let everyone know the good and bad of education mm -hmm. and how you can deal with certain things. Um not judging a book by its cover mm -hmm. and saying when you look at a person don't automatically assume that they're okay that they're okay because they have different faces i may be smiling all the time which i may be crying inside yes yes i yes. may be crying outside and i may be a demon inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not not me personally but it, you know it's like it, it, it happens know, but it's, it all depends on that per that person's mental mindset mm -hmm. the thing is getting help. I was going to say, do you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you sat there and you just, you, you dropped something that was just very viable, you know, without you seeking that help, you may not have been here. And you mm -hmm. have some people that are walking this, 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 this realm of, of, of the ledge, but they won't get that help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for me, I, there was, they'd rather lose know, it all. And I, well, <laughs> they'd there, rather there, lose well, it all. There was a, there was really a point in my life where I'm not gonna say I was suicidal, but I didn't care what I did, how I did it, and what the consequences. Were. And see, and, I simply and, did and, and, not and, and care. And that's where I come from the realm that they could love, you could lose it all. So most of the time, the, what's the saying? We hurt the ones we love the most. Yeah, and unfortunately, I did, and it's uh, you know, I definitely apologize, and mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I had to fix me. That's right. Because if I don't fix me, I can't fix anybody else. I can't fix anything. And and, and here we are. Yeah. Here we are, everybody. Here we are. We're talking to a former educator who's saying, you know what? I wasn't okay. And I didn't get what I needed. I didn't get what I needed, but I still had to go into that classroom. And I still had to perform every day with that mask on. Yeah. At any time you at any time you could have dropped that mask and it could have been bad for everyone. So well, that's again the good and the bad within this thing. Well, well, some of it was me, meaning that I didn't identify I had a problem. And there was a at my former principal where I let her know, not thinking she was gonna take it to the extreme, mm -hmm. but she did. And I'm glad she at first I was mad. I'm glad I was mad as I don't know whatever. But mm -hmm. then I thought about it, you know, she's part of why I'm here. Mm -hmm. She's part of I probably, I, probably, I probably didn't want to admit it, but I thought about it. She did me a favor. Admitting, do you think admitting it is the hardest thing? 
For a man, yeah. You got For a man. To, it is. But that that's how you mature. Yeah. And um you have some men that will never. Yeah. I, but but then but then I'm gonna say this. Then they won't they never matured. Yeah, and I'm saying you make mistakes. You do. You're human. And, but and, the thing is you learn thing. from them. It is, but if you're constantly out here making the mistakes, then you ain't learned. Then you ain't learned a thing. Yeah, you learned. And and you know what? You, it, this is just my opinion, everybody. My opinion, Derek. I'm taking this as my opinion, so I'm taking ownership of it. If you don't learn, then you'll never be better, and there nothing will work in the atmosphere or the universal fear that you that you walk in. Nothing, because if you keep hiding, pretty soon somebody's gonna see through it. Yeah. And, and, and most of the time, people that have suffered with this mental health and then they don't want to they don't want to say anything. A lot of them, you have this narcissistic behaviors. So where they hide, they hide, they, they they mask up, they make their like you said, you could be walking in with they, they smiling. They, they think they're bigger than everybody. They're on top of the world. But inside they are dying inside. They don't want to be alone inside. If they're alone with themselves and have to face themselves, they that's that's when the suicidal thoughts. And but again, just admitting the fact that you need help and then going through the channels. So when you admitted you needed help, what channels did you go through to get your help? Because this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, through the military. I, I went through the military and um, we started we without going too much great detail, because some of that is in the book. Sure. We went back to as early as I can remember. Wow. And things came out. And I was like, wow. I so he's not telling it all because yeah. he wants y'all to go get that book. Yeah. He's I mean, I mean things came out that I, I, I literally had to ask. I said, I'm legit. And I was like, wow. And there was things that I, there was something that I didn't think my dad knew. Mm. And then my wife had a conversation with my dad be, sometime before he passed. And I was like, I didn't even know he knew that. And I'm thinking I, mm -hmm. you know, had I wouldn't say it was a secret, but I just didn't think anyone knew. knew right, exactly. But it it gave me um, resolution of why this particular person mm -hmm. didn't speak to me anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why. I, I thought it was something that I did to find out it was something that my dad said. Because it's, it, it, if you get the book, you see what I'm talking. Oh yeah, about. I'm definitely getting the book because you 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 got me wondering right yeah. now what it was, what it was said, and how it was. But the good thing about it is that the steps you took to get that help. Did you? Did something? You know, because you know a lot of people will go get help when when there uh, is just something just horribly went wrong. Or did you see? Did you see it horribly going wrong? And you you it's, didn't wait for the train derailment. It's when um and it's. It, me, me and my wife had separated mm -hmm. for a period of time. And that's when, I, you know, I'm thinking, and I really messed up. Mm. And I, I didn't know what else to do. Were you teaching at this point? No, I was actually. Because it does make a difference. When you have a, when you I have think, a I think good I was, life at home. I think I was briefly, I'm trying to remember, I think I was briefly teaching. And then um, I went on active duty. Okay. I went on active duty. And. And so it's sort of like half and half. But what what really triggered it is, you know, I started to see the toll was taken not only on my wife, but on my, my son and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and, and, and that's when I told you I was just doing things, didn't care about hurt your feelings, didn't didn't care really what happened to me. And a lot of people never saw that mm -hmm. they, they, because I hit it well. That's why I love the name <clears throat> of your book. Yeah, my, I, I hit it well. Mm hmm. But, and a lot of people do hide it well. Yeah, I, I hit it well, not knowing the impact it was having right. on everyone else. Well, put like this, I knew, but I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I didn't care until I, I until I said, you know what? I, I was having a nervous breakdown, and I called, you know, I, I called the uh, suicide hotline for mm -hmm. the military, and and then we set up counseling, and that's pretty much how it got started. Because again, you said something earlier. A lot of African American men just won't do that. Nah, you know, I was speaking with pastors. And I'm like, look, God ain't helped me right now. I didn't even help me right now. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't see it. Mm -hmm. We'll pray on it. I said, no, I, look, no, I, I, need, I need action. I, I need action. Mm -hmm. You know, I need God to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Not through the air. I need words because I, I need, need somebody right I need somebody to tell me. And um, but don't get me wrong, prayer. Does work. It does. Prayer, but, and, and, they, and then you know they they throw out that slogan, you know, prayer changes things. But in the midst, and, and that is so true. 
That is so true. I want to stand on that. That is so true. But within the midst of prayer changing things, you have to change along with it. Man, it was my mindset. It, it was it was definitely it, and, and, and that is a word that I use. Um, I see it uh, in, in this line of business is business coaching. I see it a lot because a lot of my clients are men. And, and the first thing, if they walk in there and then they say, you know, I'm an alpha male and this, this, that, and the third. I see the red flags. I'm not going to be able to work with you the way I need to work with you. Because if you don't walk in with the, with the set that we're going to change your mind frame, that's why you're here. You're here to get coached because you're not doing it right. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't walk into that mindset and then you, us as educators, us as, us as educators, I, I love the fact that you're here tonight and we're talking about this because we have so many educators who are afraid to say, they're not okay. There's so many educators right now who are wearing these masks and they're going into these, they're going into, they're teaching our children. Yeah, and that's why I, I think it's, you know, although I'm not in the classroom anymore, mm -hmm. it's very important to continue to mentor our youth. Yes. And because in essence, we're somewhat of the mental health counselors. You are. They, they have issues and we're talking with them. And, and once you get that trust, mm -hmm. The thing is, you want to build up the self-esteem. And that's something I've been doing for years. I don't always publicize it. Right. But because my reward, I get my reward from higher power. That's right. I don't need the accolades. But what I will tell people, if you want to solve the problem, be part of the solution. That's thank you. And thank you. That, rather, those rather, are, those than, are good words. I, rather than just throwing stuff, like, look, mentor kid. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and don't do it because you're in a political figure or you're running for office. Do it even if you lose. Do it afterward, and do it I, afterwards. I, I've never stopped that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy for the things that I've done and will continue to do. You know, my my uh, my godson got a full ride to Bowie State. That's amazing. And, and kudos and, to him. And he remembers certain. Like I always got these words. I always told needs and wants. He remembers that to this day. Needs. I said there's needs and there's wants. Well, that, focus on your needs. That goes back yeah. to us being good educators because we just sat here and talked about a host of teachers and principals and all that 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 we still remember from. Make sure that that whatever enlightenment you're being in a child's life, that is something positive that they can remember. Because it, 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 and, and that's all about all a part of being a good educator, because there have been many a times like you and I have just discussed that we go in with the good and the bad. But the, our, our main target is to educate children so that way they can come out and be productive people within society. Yeah. And education is not necessary academia. Education exactly. Life I skills, love it. It's social life skills, skills, social skills, yeah. emotional skills, like all of those things. Yeah. And people forget that all all of those six phases that we go through within those realms, they help us be productive citizens. And they help with the overall development Absolutely. of that youth, because whether people want to admit it or not, youth, they're 100 percent of our future. They, they are. They are. It. They, they, yeah. they, they, they're 100 percent. They, they just, and, and, you know, and, and, and I, I feel sometimes that, that us being teachers, we drop the ball. But people have dropped the ball. The system has dropped the ball on us many a time. But we can't make excuses for that. Okay. You know, I, I, I stand to say tonight that, you know, if you're in a classroom and you're suffering, step aside. Step aside because the damage that you're doing, you're damaging children. OK, even though that damage may have been projected onto you, if, if I told you I'm getting burnt out. Right. I was already burnt out. I'm getting burnt out. So what I've done is I've started doing things differently. I started looking for other ways to financially uh, litigate what I need in my life, because I know for a fact that I don't want to I don't want to get to that point where I'm burnt out, where I have to dial a number. It's, you have to know when it's time for you to go. You call me feel like you get burnt out. I, I walk you through it. I, I am. I am literally almost there with the burnout. And I think I thank you for that, because not a lot of people would give that off for me. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you I'll know, walk you through it. And just because and just because I look like I have it all together, it takes time to make sure you have it all together, especially when you're dealing with the mental capacity of, of what you're going through. And then you have to be the mental, the mental stability for so many others when you're teaching and educating. So, yeah. So tonight we talked about the good, the bad. Um, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying we're looking forward to the next book. He didn't drop a couple jewels on the next book. Um, I Again, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. 
Um, I, I, I know we, me and you kept hitting and missing, but I knew once I once I had got the snippet of the book, I said, no, I got to have him on the show because I want him because I knew you would come on and I knew you would tell the ultimate, as the kids would say, 100. You was going to keep it that right. way. Yeah, and there was nothing yeah. to sugarcoat because you ha- this tonight, this tonight could have a teacher going in tomorrow and saying, I need that help. Yeah. And, and, and that's really. And that's, that's real. That's really, all, that's really all I. If at the end of the day, you just want to be something positive to somebody. Yes. Um, yeah. Sometimes we can get negative. But if I'm going to get negative, I'm going to give you a solution. I'm going to tell you why. It has to be that way. And can you fix it? Mm -hmm. Am I always right? No. But when I'm right, I'm right. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to tell you I'm wrong. And the same thing happens with teachers. They're not always right. No. No, we're not. We're not always right. And and parents, you got to understand. They got a life, too. (laughs) I said that earlier. Like, we have a life outside. And then if you stop and think you have 25, and then you go to the college level and you have 75, those are 75 other beings other than yourself. And then you got a home life, too. So understand we we need to know when you're when you're a teacher, walk in your purpose, know what know what you're there for. And when you're when your light gets burnt out, sometimes you don't always have to go back and refuel. Move on to something else. But always understand that when you take that classroom, you're impacting the lives of others. And if your life isn't isn't on track, then you got to understand that you're not going in and you're not. And I and this is what I tell people. I go into my and I give 95 percent. I would I, I can't give 100 because I got I got to be selfish. I got to keep something for mm-hmm. me because I got to do that drive home. So I got to keep something yeah. for me. But every day, if you can't show up with that ability, then may I'm not saying just leave your job. But maybe there's something else that you can do within the realm of education besides going in and being responsible for other people. Yeah, And then parents also have to realize that teachers are going to go through some stuff. Oh, be yeah. Patient. Oh, yeah. Be patient with them. Um, Encourage them. Yeah. Motivate them. Yeah. Uplift them. If yeah. you are if you are a parent out there tonight, this one, you get a week out of all the weeks they're in school for a parent appreciation or, or teacher appreciation, rather. No, appreciate your teachers all the time. And you, Check in on them. Make you, sure they're good. Make sure your child is being hated. And about they're it. not the problem. They'll be surprised at how far I thank you. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and I got, I can listen. I, when I was, when I was in the, in the when I was in the elementary school, world, I, some of the parents, they, they wouldn't show up for parent teacher meetings and I've never seen them until you, it was in fifth grade when they come with their little graduation, then you start seeing all these people all crying and patting. I'm like, wait a minute, honey, I ain't seen you all school year. But again, it is mental health month. Derek has dropped some really good new, good uh, nuggets about and jewels about what he went through in the education system and what he's gone through personally. And and I feel every I feel every aspect of, of what you went through. And I, and again, I want to say I thank God for the fact of your wife who gave you the push to say, hey, and then for you to take ownership and get the help that you need. And I thank God you're still sitting here with me and you're able to share the platform with me. We want to bring you back when you get your second book so we can talk about that. And I thank you for all your service. Uh, I appreciate it. I thank you for your service. And and, and, and what I will say, and and I told uh, Stacy earlier, I said, I'm proud of you. You've come a long way. And Unless you're from the wood, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> then you you, got would, me from the you wood. wouldn't understand. So I was conditioned um, into I'm, that. I'm saying when she was telling me everything she was doing, I was like, wow. I mean, she's a boss. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> I'm that. I'm going to let you know that. And I, if, if you follow her podcast, she will definitely tell you all the things that she does, owns, about to do. It is, it is I, great things going on. Yeah. It's great things going yeah. on. And before we leave you tonight, we just want you, we want to invite you tomorrow um, to our fourth annual entrepreneur pop up. We have about 25 to 30 vendors that are going to be here. We have moon bounce. We have food. We have music. Um, it's going to be, they say it's going to be a little hot. So make sure you guys dress appropriately. Come on out and support your small local vendors, your small business owners. Um, that's one of the things that we have going on here at Brass Mill. We will be grand opening our executive suite you'll be able to take tours through there we still have some things that it's not 100 open at this point but we have we have sold out almost every office we only have two offices left wow. in that building so if you need an office space or you need some type of business coaching anything anything that you need we have here on the property i did take uh, derek on a little tour of the property and told him about all the great things Business Suites of Delaware is now open and operating. We are looking to move our hub again to another location. Um, 
for those who don't know, I'm on my way to Texas for a leadership mentorship to where we're going to be taking students from the from the leadership part all the way up into the graduation piece. Um, and I'm very happy about that to, to share the stage with 12 other great we'll, people. We'll, we'll definitely try to bring this down to Charles County. We're going to try to bring Listen, uh, I, I, I want to come to Charles County. Uh, I want to come. Um, like I said, it's not where I'm from. It's what I'm doing now. Because where, where I'm from built me. I am self-made. And it, being from Edgewood, it taught me a lot. The good, the bad, and now the performance of what is enhanced in me. So, yes. We love you guys right here at the Business Suites of Brass Mill. We want to thank you again, Derek. Well, can I uh, put a plug where they get the book? So we're up. Oh, yes. Let's put the plug in, please. It's uh, it's uh, edvocare.org. That's Echo Delta Victor Oscar Care at dot org. It is and, on the screen. Yep, if you see it, it's yep. on the screen. And um, if you uh, purchase the book between now and end of the month, 100%, 100% of the proceeds go to Light the Way Foundation. That's yes. lightthefoundation.org. And 100% of the proceeds. So, um, and one and of the I, things, I may have extended to June. But yeah, I one know, of the things yeah. he said was what, about his book. He gives more. He gives the majority of away. Yeah. So he doesn't get, get much profit off of this because it was therapeutic for him to write that book. So we want to keep make. We want to make sure that we want to support him. We want to encourage him. If you guys have any comments and you want to leave it on the Know Your Purpose page, he will be uh, sharing it. So that way he, we will get all the information over to him. But again, it's been great. We had a fantastic time, but we got a lot discussed tonight. And we're hoping that this helps someone to make sure that tomorrow morning is a better morning for you. If you're in the education field, just a better morning for everyone. Again, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Please check on your loved ones. Please check on your friends. Please check on your cats, your dogs. Check on everyone. Make sure that everybody's okay. Oh, you can, hey, know your purpose. No, thank you. <laughs> and he ended it for me tonight. Know your purpose. Thank you guys so much. We love you. See you next Friday.